I got way over a thousand Star Trek uh, really? things, but my favorite <laughs> thing is I have um, the majority of the piece that was used for the special effects to make the transporter beam. Yeah. I have a, a mug. I've been told there's one of three known to exist for Star Trek Seven, which never got made. Um, but that that thing, I always tell everybody, that's my favorite thing in here. Hey there, Den of Geek fans. Aaron Sager is here, and I am in the Den of Geek Studios. Studios, studios. At New York Comic Con 2023, and the studios are powered by eBay, which we're in luck because we actually have Gene Cook from eBay that's joining us today. Hey, it's Gene. true, it's true. It's Super fired up to be here. We are happy to have you here. Brian Volkweiss from Nacelle Company. Hello, how are you? And then Ming Chen, a buddy of mine and just nerd extraordinaire. Hey, what's going on, everybody? <laughs> so... I gathered this sort of A team, this super nerd power collectible team, to talk about collectibles. And, you know, what is, how do we even define a collectible anymore? What is a collectible according to you? Gene, why don't you kick that off? For me, a collectible is anything that you're passionate about that particularly speaks to you. I will highlight one thing. This was an unexpected experience that I had yesterday. Uh, Umberto Ramos is my favorite, uh, uh, one of my favorite uh, current comic artists. I did not know that he was going to be at the con. Uh, I was walking uh, through Artist Alley with a friend and saw him, and suddenly I was 12 years old again. Uh, I couldn't think of anything to say, um, but he was uh, uh, fortunately super cool. And so I uh, got this uh, 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 Spider-Verse, uh, Spider-Boy variant that he had done uh, with a mark on it and uh, let me take my picture with him. So this is personally meaningful to me, both because it's just beautiful uh, art. Um, uh, I've got a personal connection to the human being who created that. Um, and this is always going to be special. This is, uh, I'm going to hold on to this. I love Umberto's work. I remember when he first came on the scene, I was like, this is something new and different it's with nice Spider-Man. It's clean, yeah. Yeah, I loved it. Uh, what about you, Brian? What do you think? Honestly, I think it's a very simple, I think it's a number. And I think that number is around five for something to be a collectible. Once you have five, you're like, I don't know. Uh, do I need a six? Now I have a six. Like, I mean, like Hallmark this year is putting out a 89 Batman that, and no offense to Hallmark, stay till the end of the story. But um, yeah, I mean, I have a thousand of those. They look the same. They just don't say Hallmark 2023 on the bottom. But I bought one the minute I could. That's a collectible. Yeah, and to me, a collectible is something that you see, an object, uh, you know, artwork that elicits a, a, a rush, a rush to the head, a rush to the heart, where you see it and you're, and you're like, I must own that. I, you know, it can be a $1 figure from a bin. It could be, you know, a hundred thousand uh, dollar, you know, one of a kind. It's just something that that you see and you're like, I, I love that. I must have that right away. Uh, I remember getting G.I. Joe figures when I was a kid and playing with them and then setting them aside, going to bed and waking up and I couldn't wait to play with it again. Like to me, that's what a collectible is. I, I like all of those responses because it kind of speaks to this notion of a collectible is is personal. I mean, as you said, it speaks to the heart, speaks to the head, but it is personal. It doesn't have to be just movie memorabilia or a comic book. It could be, I mean, I have tiki mugs and GI Joes. It could be whatever is personal to you. Uh, that said, what was that moment where as a little nerd, you're like, Oh, I, I might be collecting something here. This, I might be a collector. I barely remember what happened like yesterday. But I, I remember like it was yesterday, and this is like 27 years ago, I was at the comic book store that I used to go to in college, and they had an ATST, you know, the old Kenner line, on the shelf. It was $30 in 1996, and I remember having that feeling of, I, I, I always wanted one of these. I never had one of these. Must buy. And I, it's the first time I ever bought anything that I knew the minute I bought it, um, I wasn't going to play with it. 
And that it's, I have a couple things that I played with when I was a kid, like R2D2, a Lego figure, whatever. But of my <laughs> 4,000, excuse me, uh, piece uh, toy collection, I view that ATST as the first, literally the first piece of it. I was trying to think. So one of the things with me is I like a little bit of everything. So probably first when I was a kid, uh, it was coins. I love that there were stories behind them. You could hold them in your hand. You could imagine that an artist actually created them. So I like how things have transitioned uh, now. Um, we've got Star Wars coins and Marvel uh, sort of uh, things that are bringing that form factor uh, with other things that I'm passionate about. Um, but it started in coins and then Lego and Matchbox and uh, entertainment memorabilia. Uh, when something is uh, is precious and special, it doesn't really matter if it's expensive or not expensive, but especially if I can imagine the human being that sort of put their creativity into it, uh, then I get excited. Uh, when I was about nine years old, I moved to a new neighborhood and uh, I was pretty down. I had to make new friends and everything. And to cheer me up, my mom took me to the toy store and I went to the toy store and I saw a G.I. Joe Cobra Hiss tank. And I was like, whoa, what is this? That looks cool, it came with a cool figure. So I bought it and I took it back and uh, the other kids in the neighborhood were like, whoa, what is that? And I was like, it's a G.I. Joe Cobra his tank. And uh, so they started collecting G.I. Joe and that kind of bonded me with the neighborhood. And, uh, you know, that's how I made all my new friends and, um, you know, made my, my life experience way better. But, you know, from then on, you know, we, we all collected figures and, and dug up trenches in our backyard, much to my dad's chagrin. But it really bonded me with the rest of the neighborhood. So I think it was that moment where I was like, I'm going to collect and uh, I'm never going to stop. I, I think just because you've referenced G.I. Joe twice, I have to say that I think it was probably G.I. Joe and Star Wars and then Masters of the Universe that turned me into that collector early on. It's because there was a checklist on the bo back of the boxes saying these, you know, collect them all. So there was something about it. Like, okay. Yeah, right. It's like. I guess I got to now, you know? So uh, G.I. Joe helped turn me into a collector and then Same. comic books later. Same? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, oh, yeah. What was the early G.I. Joe figure that you were like, I got to get this? Well, it, it always starts with Blowtorch. And if anybody from the Hasbro classified team is listening, why have you not made Blowtorch? Anyway, sorry. No, I, I please, do appreciate a please, good Dreadnoughts talk. It's a public yeah. service please, announcement. Please get that out there. Yeah. No. Um, but no, I mean, I, my G.I. Joe collection after Star Wars, Star Trek, and it would either be slightly behind Batman or tied with Batman. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And I'm a vehicle guy. So, like, I would say there's a good chance I have actually more vehicle. I have four his tanks, four different colors. So, uh, yeah, I may have more vehicles than figures. Okay. I've never counted. Well, that's a lot of figures, that, or that's a lot of vehicles. Uh, and, and Gene, for you, what was like an early holy grail that you pursued? Well, it has been a minute, but you said Star Trek, and so I am super into uh, Star Trek. And um, uh, I got to meet Patrick Stewart at a Star Trek convention several years ago, and I was so excited. Um, and he was selling for charity. Um, uh, the canvas from the director's chair that he used uh, when he was filming uh, uh, TNG. Uh, and so, you know, was happy to do that. Uh, it was nice that it helped uh, charity. But then I remember I was walking in the airport in, in Las Vegas and like nobody else cares. But for me, I've got this holy grail that is inside my jacket. Um, so that is special to me. Um, and uh, uh, one of my best friends uh, who also works uh, at eBay, big Star Trek guy, and we just got to go back and hear uh, Patrick Stewart talk uh, just last week. Oh, right, for his new book. He's yeah. got the book out. It was great. Um, yeah, uh, I'm, I'm guessing Brian could pick up on that. I got way over a thousand Star Trek uh, really? things, but my favorite thing is I have um, the majority of the piece that was used for the special effects to make the transporter beam all seven seasons of Next Gen and the pilot of Deep Space Nine. So of all the pieces, and there's some pretty crazy stuff in there. Yeah. I have a, a mug. I've been told there's one of three known to exist for Star Trek Seven, which never got made. Um, but that that thing, I always tell everybody, that's my favorite thing in here. That's so cool. Yeah. I cannot believe I have that. It's uh, the Star Trek element is weird because it wasn't even something I was looking for, but recently someone 
gifted me the, um, it was a PR kit from the Star Trek experience from Vegas oh my God. on opening day. I am obsessed with the Star Trek experience. I didn't get to go. It was so, so great. I did it. Really? I actually did it. It, it, it was, first of all, I mean, it was awesome. Like it was awesome. Like they nailed the transporter effect. Like it was awesome. But the the story about how it got greenlit, how it got built, how it got ran, is I mean that's a, that's a two hour documentary. It is hysterical. The final auction where they auctioned everything off. I don't. Do you know that's like yeah, half, I've heard about it. Yeah, half the stuff got stolen. Yeah, like the morning what? of the auction. Oh no! I don't think like, this press kit was stolen. I'm just yeah. putting it out there. It was just a gift. <laughs> yeah, sorry, Paramount. Sorry. Anyway. What was what's an early holy grail for you? Uh, I mean, my holy early, uh, my early holy grail. Like I didn't necessarily even get when I was a kid, uh, and I, and I had to go back to GI Joe again. But the the USS Flag aircraft carrier. Oh gosh. Uh, it was a seven foot aircraft carrier, one of the biggest toys ever made, and one of the most expensive toys ever made at the time. Uh, I didn't get it initially when it came out, but that thing stuck in my head for thirty years. And thirty years later, somebody brought it in uh, to Jay and Bob's secret stash, and. Had it, gave me a great price on it, and uh, I had the finally had the means to to buy it, and uh, and I finally got it. But you know, some things you just don't forget about, right? And then uh, you know it, you may get it in a year, you may get it in thirty years. Right. You never know, but you never forget about it. That so I I love that, and that's I think we've talked about that before. That was one of those items that we all knew a kid who had it, or or knew a kid who knew a kid who had the flag, but I didn't personally have it. I didn't. Uh, but that also speaks to this idea of now we're all nerds gone pro. We're professional nerds and we're able through comic cons and through the job to kind of come across these pieces. It's gotten a little bit easier. So is there something still out there that you're looking for that despite your connections, you still haven't been able to find? Anyone have one to leap to mind? I got, I got it right there, but I'm talking too much. No, you I like do it. too. I'm thinking. Go ahead. I'm way into statues now. So the uh, you know the uh, sideshow premium format statues and uh, uh, those are always ones I'm on the I'm the lookout for. Um, it's hard buying them at a con because they're so big. And uh, you know if, if you've traveled, like oh how am I going to fit this in my suitcase? Uh, luckily shipping exists. Um, but you know then you want multiples and uh, yeah some of these things. Uh, it's not necessarily you can't get them. Right away, but you have to think logistically, how am I going to get this home? And then some of them are so big, it's like, all right, where am I going to put this once I get it back? But you know what we do as collectors? We figure it out. By the way, just going back to the flag, first time I ever touched one was when we were doing Toys That Made Us. Like, I had seen them, like, in stores. Like, literally the first time I was ever like, ooh, was, uh, was, was while directing that, yeah. And it still, it gives you a charge, that thing from your childhood, this almost mythic item. Nothing like it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Gene, do you know what, what... I'm trying to think. Uh, my wife would say that I've got exactly the right job because um, plenty of things that I am not great at, but I am uh, pretty good at finding hard-to-find things. And so if I get obsessed about something, uh, I tend to be able to find it. I was recently, I was a Halloween costume, big fan of Kolchak, the Night Stalker, and I decided, all right, finally I'm going to do it. I'm going to dress as Kolchak for Halloween. But of course, I couldn't just, you know, throw, buy a seersucker suit and a recorder. I had to find this specific model of recorder and camera, and I started on this path. So now I'm going through and collecting all of these items connected to Kolchak, the Night Stalker, and I've been able to find some good, sweet, like, originals on eBay as it happens. So what's, what's your cur current grail that you haven't found? So wow. is Vlix, and I'm, I think when I first met you guys, I had, like, eight or nine Holy Grails. Like, I wanted the Star Trek bridge for a motion picture for the three and three. Like, so, and I just got the uh, a tie bomber, a bright white uh, from the micro line. I think all that's left is Vlix, some random character from droids, Star Wars droids. Only released in Brazil was the figure yeah, only in Brazil. And very briefly. Yeah. It was on the shelves for like a week before it was pulled off and then a factory fire. Uh, burn the stock down. Yeah. Really? Yeah. It's the rarest production figure. Only Boba Fett is rarer. And that was not production. Well, now I'm going to get obsessed and we'll, yeah. we'll see what we can do. Yeah. 
By the way, they're easy to find if yeah. you have a lot of money. They are quite expensive. Yeah, I forgot. I was well, looking at the them other at one point. Yeah. yeah. The uh, and once you have that, Brian, it's just like he's retiring. I we'll saw, never see him again. I, I saw I saw an off card. It looked like a car had run it over thirty five times, and it was like, oh, twenty eight thousand dollars. Great. <laughs> <laughs> what a good use of twenty eight thousand dollars. Well, before we wrap it up, obviously we're at New York Comic Con, so. Give us a lowdown on your plans for the con. What are you guys going to be up to? I, uh, I mean, I, I'm just wandering and having fun as a fan. Um, people are like, do you have a table? Are you doing panels? I'm like, no, I think I'm going to buy stuff or try not to buy stuff, uh, as, as it were. But, uh, yeah, I'm out there looking for collectibles and uh, stuff to add my, to my collection. Um, I think uh, guys like us, we, you know, people are like, well, what are you looking for? It's like, well, I'll know it when I see it, you know, right? So, yeah. Um, yeah, we'll find stuff we didn't know existed or maybe something new we didn't know that come out. And, uh, yeah, it always gives that rush to the head and the heart, my friends. So, uh, yeah, that collectible, that glow, the collectible glow, man. So when Ming walks out of New York Comic Con with, like, a nice carded Vlix, <laughs> he's like, hey, Brian, look what I got. I'm not going to find that very funny. <laughs> We're friends you, right someone, now. Someone should have called me. I'll give you a good deal on it. I'll give you a good deal. Oh, look at that. <laughs> $27,000. What are you up to at the con? Uh, we have a panel on Sunday, and I should know what time it is, but it's on Sunday. And Hopefully everyone has a phone and Google. And we hope everybody comes. The power of the Internet. They uh, can the find us out. The power of the Internet. But, um, and then, yeah, I just, I'm going to walk around and talk to fans and see what people are saying. Cause just like you said, I've, I'm not looking for anything I'm, and it won't be a flicks here. I'll tell you that. All right. Gene, what are you up to? Well, I got to walk the floor yesterday, so I'm going to be hanging out at the booth, um, and uh, just kind of letting it come to me. There's a, we got a lot of cool things going on. We've got a fan experience going on with Funko, our neighbors who are right next door. Uh, we've got Star Wars and uh, Marvel coins in the booth. And then we are so excited about eBay Live. Uh, we've got an eBay Live studio right at the heart of the booth. It's got great energy. We're going to have artists coming in and signing. Uh, so I'll be hanging out and kind of letting the con come to me a little bit. All right. Love nerding out with you guys. This has been fun. This is, uh, Thank you. Yeah. I, all right. Now I need to go shop for some stuff. But this has been a collector's chat at the Denny Geek Studios powered by eBay at New York Comic Con 2023.